mountain biking. It's a lot of things to a lot of people. For some, it's exercise. For others, it's competition. But for most of us, it's about fun. It's just a good time. Yeah. And at the core of it all is the trails. Long flat ones, short steep ones, curly ones, ones with drops, ones with rocks. A trail will always take us somewhere special. And that's where we're going today, somewhere special. I have to tell you, when you're driving this far north, it really feels like you're headed to the top of the world. Every day the sun sets later and later, cities turn into towns, towns turn into villages. Everything spaces out and you have to start planning your fuel stops. It's nothing but wilderness up here. You can drive a whole day without phone reception. Up here, you've got to find the gems. We've been traveling north in Canada. And if you go far enough, you'll run out of province and you'll run into territory. In this case, the Yukon. They've even put up a sign as a little heads up. If you travel past that sign for four some odd hours, you'll reach Caribou Crossing. The locals call it Car Cross. It's a small place, packed with history and culture, and is surrounded by mountains. Of those mountains, there are many to choose from, but a peak by the name of Montana is the one we're after. On the eastern face of the mountain is a trail called Mountain Hero, and that'll be our goal today, to get to Mountain Hero. Climbing has always been a necessary evil for me. Nine times out of 10, I'll shuttle if possible. But on this day, the journey to the trail would be as enjoyable as the trail itself. A century ago, it was silver that drew people here. Back then, it was mules and miners making their way up this mountain. Those tracks they scraped out of the hillside are the same ones we're using today. And thank goodness for that, it's stunning up here. And it's not just those old roads that were left behind. The trestles, the track, and all the stuff a mine needed back then is rotting away up here. At some point, this stuff would have been considered garbage, not even worth the cost to remove it. But now it's old enough to be interesting. It's become history. In fact, these ruins are now protected by law. After ascending through the past, we reached our destination. A lone pole adorned with a Yukon license plate. It was finally time to descend. But why call it Mountain Hero? Local lore suggests that a road builder by the name of Sam McGee put this trail in to assist with the construction of a tramway that would haul ore down the mountain. And while Sam may have been the original mountain hero, I might suggest another one, Wayne Roberts. A century after Sam first cut the line, 
Wayne rediscovered it, grown in and impassable. So he did what any trail builder would do. He brought it back to life. And here we are, 120 years later, tearing through the trees. Scaring ourselves at the seemingly random switchbacks. Guys, you're going the wrong way. <laughs> Hopping the now fallen tram cables. Wire. Cable. Metal wire. And cruising under the old towers. Oh, cool. Going right under. If Sam really did cut this trail initially, it's a fantastic legacy. But for Wayne Roberts, there's no doubt it is his legacy. Wayne left us with this epic in 2016 after a four year battle with cancer. Oh, that's it. But it's not just Wayne's legacy now. A new generation has picked up where Wayne left off. Single Trek to Success is a program that gets young folks out into the bush, working on trail and getting paid for it. One of their projects was to connect Mountain Hero from the tree line to the old road we came in on. And as it turns out, the STS crew has gotten pretty good at cutting trail. At the bottom of the mountain, near town, is a zone littered with granite. It's pretty much the dream for any drill builder. To the untrained eye, this is just a bunch of rock. I'm just uh, having a look everywhere around me. But to us mountain bikers, it's a playground. Oh, where am I going? Inside? <laughs> nice. And while there are plenty of natural lines to ride here, a bit of lumber and know-how can really open up the possibilities. Oh, wow, cool. The most interesting pairing of these materials might be at Elephant Rock. Whew, scary. Yeah. Nice. Whew. What Wayne wanted was to turn Carcross into a bit of a destination. A place for mountain bikers, hikers, and outdoor enthusiasts. Doubters described his ideas as Wayne's world. Who would ever want to come to this tiny corner of the world? Well, he trudged on, confident in his vision. As it turned out, Wayne was right. He started something, single track to success continued it, and now Carcross is a destination, complete with something called Wayne's world. <laughs>